Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge after being wronged. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story. Noisy resort guest is loud throughout the night. Ends up with his secret going back to his family. The second story. Promoter did not pay us money for the concert, so we refused to perform. The third story. Neighbors constantly held noisy parties and did not make it quieter, so I ruined their hangover morning. Today's first story is, Noisy Resort Neighbor Gets His Secrets Spilled. My wife and I decided to go to Southern California for the holidays. We found ourselves a nice resort and checked in. All was well until we noticed that the walls in our room were very thin. As we entered our room, we could hear our next door neighbor talking and having an argument with his girlfriend. We shared one common wall with them. They were shouting pretty loud and we could hear everything through the wall. We'll refer to this guy as Noisy Neighbor, NN. NN kept fighting with his girlfriend about something she said earlier. We didn't follow, wasn't interested and decided to go eat and explore around the town we were in. We came back around 10 at night and all was quiet. We figured that NN and his girlfriend already went to bed, so we went to bed as well. Turns out he was out. NN and his girlfriend came back at 12 laughing and really loud. Loud to the point that we could hear them and hear their entire conversation. Looks like they made up after fighting that morning. We hear the girlfriend say that she's hungry, and NN calls for pizza delivery. It was there that we heard NN's name, phone number, and credit card info. Not that we would do anything with it. They kept chatting and laughing, and we could hear every bit of their conversation through the thin walls. Wife and I try earplugs, radio, and everything we could think of to drown out the noise. We were hoping that they would eventually turn in for the night, and there would be some peace and quiet. Yet NN was full of energy and boyish laughter. Finally, at around 2 a.m., we decided to call the concierge and let the resort security deal with it. The resort we stayed at was meant for mindfulness and meditation, so it did enforce some quiet hours. Security called them up and told them that they were too loud and to keep their voices down. This did the trick for some time and we fell asleep. Only to be woken up again at around 5 a.m. to some really loud love, like moaning and screaming from the girlfriend. After they were done with their business, they washed up and just kept talking. Laying there in bed, I heard all about NN's job, where he was from, where he grew up, his political views, and so on. Finally, at 6 or so, we called up the front desk again. This time, security actually came and knocked on their door to tell them to keep their voices down, as it was still officially quiet hours. NN and his girlfriend were furious that they could be disturbed when they were just having fun and having a good time. They claimed that they weren't loud at all, and why can't they just have some fun? They threatened to leave poor reviews for the resort, and made sure that all their friends would hear about this. Security took that all in, gave them their warning, and left. After security left, Inan and his girlfriend started talking SH about wife and me through the wall, knowing that we could hear it. Stuff like, our neighbors are such a-holes, probably racial slur, what's wrong with having love with my girlfriend, huh? Too loud for you peas? And just deliberately talked to his girlfriend in a really loud voice, talking about how great the love was and how she was going to scream and moan louder next time. I was frustrated at this time with very little sleep. I took out my cell phone and recorded everything that we were hearing hoping to show the front desk just how little soundproof the room was, and hopefully ask for a room change. But then something happened. At 7 or so, we heard NN's phone ring and suddenly NN and girlfriend were really silent. Then I hear NN say, Hi NN's wife, how are you sweetie? I just woke up here at the conference, long day ahead, I miss you so much. It turns out NN was cheating on his wife with his mistress over Christmas. At this point, my wife and I hatched a plan. With all the information that we had on NN, his wife's name and where they lived, we started combing Facebook and yellowpages.com for more information. Lo and behold, we found what NN looked like, old man in his 50s and his wife. All the information matched up with what he had been talking about all night, and plus his zip code when he ordered pizza. A bit more digging and we found where NN's wife worked, and her email address. A simple outlook.com email address, later I compressed the recording. I had and sent it to NN's wife. The best part is that the recording contained NN's wife's phone call to NN, so she had no doubt it was definitely NN. Exhausted with little sleep, my wife and I decided to just get up and go get some breakfast around town. We come back a few hours later and stop by the concierge's desk. We wanted to thank them and their security for trying to help us get some sleep, and to ask for another room. Turns out we didn't need a room switch. They checked out this morning, a few days earlier than scheduled, the concierge told us. She mentioned something about an urgent family concern that NN had to attend to. Looks like our plan had worked much better than we had hoped for. The rest of our stay at the resort was quiet and uneventful. No one else checked into that room. I did show the front desk parts of my recording just so they know that they need to work on soundproofing their rooms in the future. The next story is... Another Promoter Fail 
This time we were providing PA and backline for an African tour. We had a run of a few shows every couple of days. Typical African musicians though wanting to sound check for 5 hours before performing for another 5 hours. These are long days. Also, the level of professionalism that we're all used to goes out the window when you're dealing with inexperienced promoters and label reps who are new to this country and the near clinical way in which we operate. We run things like a military operation. If you think that every gig is run by stoned out roadies who sit watching Spinal Tap every day on the tour bus, you're most likely mistaken. Like I said, we run things strictly on time and we follow safety procedures and everyone on the crew is professional. We struggle when people expect us to lower our standards to theirs. So anyway, we did some shows and the rule for this tour, due to the volatile nature of the events, people in the audience like to stab and kill each other every show, so there's a risk of police shutdowns every show. We decide to employ the tactic of payment for the following show at the end of the night. In other words, on show one, we got paid for that show and also the next show too. We turn up for show two and also get paid for show three, etc. We're at show four and at the end of the night we couldn't find the promoter. It's a Thursday and the next show's in London on the Saturday night. No stress. We load out of the venue and I drop a text to the promoter. Me. Hey, missed you tonight. Can you arrange to bank transfer the payment over to me for Saturday's show? No response that night. He must be tired and gone to bed. Next day, Friday, he calls me up and says he'll wire me the money ASAP. I tell him that I won't be departing for London until 10 a.m. on Saturday morning. It's a three hour drive from me. He has until then to transfer me the money or I'll assume the show is canceled. Me and the rest of the team agree to call each other around 10 a.m. to check if the gig is on. Next day, Saturday at 10 a.m., I check the bank. No funds, no expectant funds, nothing, zip. We all switch our phones off and have a day out with our respective friends and families. A nice day off. Around 4 p.m., I decide to switch my phone on. I'm coming out of the cinema with my girlfriends. My phone beeps, I glance at the screen. 25 missed calls, a dozen answered phone messages and texts from the promoter. Just as I'm about to laugh out loud, the phone rings. It's the promoter. Promoter. Hey, so, um... Where are you? Me. I'm just outside the cinema, on the way to Nando's. Promoter laughs nervously. Uh, you do know there's a show tonight, right? Me. Uh, no there's not, I reply quite reassuringly. Promoter. What do you mean? I'm at the venue now with the band. Where are you? Me. I'm on my way to Nando's for dinner. I'm 150 miles away. The back line and PA is in a truck a further 25 miles away. All the crew are having a day off. Like I said, there's no show tonight. Remember how I said we were supplying PA and backline? The musicians were stood around on stage with no drums, no keyboards, no amps, no PA systems, no techs, not even a cable. The promoter starts stressing big time on the phone to me, pleading with me to rescue the show. I ask him what time the doors are. He says 7.30 p.m. Me. Okay, look, here's the thing. It'll take me an hour to get to the truck. It's a three hour drive to London. It'll take another hour to load in and another two hours to set up for your show. It's 4 p.m. now, so that means we won't be ready to go for another 10 hours. Promoter, you mean seven hours? Me, no, because by the time you have personally driven up here to pay me my money before I set off, that's gonna be another three hours, which makes 10. Promoter, shell-shocked. Oh, no. Suddenly realizing he's effed up and will have to refund the entire show. I might sound harsh, but this promoter has repeatedly tried to screw me and many of my colleagues over many times over the years. He plays up to his cheeky little geezer type character. His boss, the head honcho, is not happy with him. We turned up for the Tuesday show because we got paid in advance on the Monday. After Tuesday's show, we were paid in full for the rest of the tour. A further 10 shows. The last story is... Party hard or go home, losers. This story comes from a few years back when my wife and I had bought our first home. It was a lovely Queenslander in a lovely town. The only problem is the neighbors, who were definitely not lovely people. They also like to have parties all the time, Weekends, weekdays, didn't matter much to them as most of them did not have jobs anyways. Their parties were loud, very loud, and went until basically whenever they finally ran out of steam. We tried calling the police as the law is quite clear about noise limits after 10 p.m. at night and before 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Unfortunately, the local cop, small town, never appeared to be available. Personally, I thought he was unwilling to face down the trash family and their relatives on his own, so I don't really blame him too much. So one summer night in the middle of the week, the trash were really going for it, thumping music, drunken yahooing and beer cans flying all across the street. I saw my neighbor from across the street trying to get them to turn it down, only to get loudly abused and threatened. We called the police, no result as usual. I tried talking and yelling over the noise and was told to party hard or go home, loser, whilst receiving all sorts of obscene gestures and several thrown beer cans. Okay, I tried the nice way. 
So at around 1 a.m. I went over the road to see my neighbor who was unsurprisingly still awake. I told him I was going for the revenge this time and asked him to forgive me for what I had planned. He was only too happy to grant forgiveness and promptly gathered his family and drove off to the local campground over near the lake. I also went and saw each of my other neighbors in the street, warning them of my plans and suggesting they might want to take measures. They were all overjoyed. Some important points here. Now my trash neighbors like to party and drink all night, then collapse in a heap and sleep all day. As none of them had cars, and thank Buddha for that, they would have to walk home, and so all stayed next door to sleep it off instead. Our houses are reasonably close together, with my driveway between them. Noise in that narrow space will echo like an MF. I am a woodworker. One of my machines is a 15 horsepower thicknesser. This thing is loud, especially when the blades are dull. I'd been meaning to change the blades for a while, as they definitely need sharpening, but for today, not a chance. If you really want a thicknesser to howl, put hardwood through it. You can see where this is going, right? So I'm up after literally three hours of sleep. I call my work and beg off sick. Boss is cool. I then get out the thicknesser and some long, very rough slabs of seasoned red gum, a beingly hard timber, and set everything up in the driveway between our houses. At precisely 7.30 a.m., wouldn't want to infringe on any noise regulations now, would we? I cranked that thicknesser up and began stuffing timber through it like the stoker on a coal train. The noise was frightening. It sounded like a banshee caught its D in a blender. I was wearing the highest grade earmuffs on the market, the type worn by the ground workers at the airport, and it still cut through me like bad curry leftovers. At this point I want you to try and imagine what my a-hole neighbors were experiencing as they were woken up by the sound of a jet engine, chewing gravel, approximately three feet from their ears, with a hangover. Man, I still laugh myself to sleep ten years later. My wife says I'm an evil person. Their house veritably exploded with reeling drunks holding their bleeding eardrums as they leapt from their flea pit beds. One particular gentleman whom I remember from the night before came to the fence and screamed at me until he finally had my attention and asked me what the F I thought I was doing. I replied, party hard or go home, loser. So I shut down the thicknesser in a fit of neighborly compassion, but only long enough for them to all slope back to their wank pits and begin snoring again. You didn't really buy the compassion BS, did you? Whoops, I said loudly. I missed a board and started up the whole SH show again. Once again, they all come tumbling out like a nest of rats washed from the sewer, yelling and complaining. Once again, I turn it all off. All good, should be done now, says I. I repeated this another three times. Frankly, I am a bit of a bee. Then the cops turn up. Yes, that's correct. They actually had the nerve to call the police on me with a noise complaint. The cop asked me if it would be possible to knock it off. I replied that I believed I was within the correct times for making noise, unlike last night when you were called. He at least had the good grace to look a bit sheepish about that and left. The neighbors learned to quiet down after that. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.